All right, let's dig in. Picking up where we left off, we're gonna try and figure out why this engine is seized, then determine where to go from there. This is not how you make a six bolt and a 2G cam angle sensor, crank angle sensor cable with loop wires, weird stuff going on. This just left like this. It's not how you do it. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it right. And we'll do it once. All right, that takes care of everything connected to the head. So now I'm gonna take the thermostat housing off and water pipe and uh, then pull the head off. Yeah, moving along. We got the studs out. So which way are we gonna go with it? Like around this? Or do we need to come this way? This way, yeah. Are you good with that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, that's a lot easier. Yeah. Powder coated head top or <laughs> tops. Carbon coated powder tops. <laughs> All right, nice. From what we can see from above, it looks fine. Um, so we're just gonna keep on, we're gonna drop, pull the engine out, engine and trans out, and get it on a stand and really dig into it. So we're gonna get it all, get it out. The engine and trans were going to need to come out anyway for this full restore. No sense in trying to troubleshoot the engine in the car. That's it. The engine's out. Um, now we're gonna we'll get the trans off and get the engine on a stand and see why it won't move. Yeah. Wow, that is filthy. It is. Very wow. Look, at all that. Look, there's like no grease in this boot anymore because it's up here. Yeah. And yeah, then, yeah that one did it too. TV. Yeah. No, it's JB Weld. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's not your fault. That was. They just JB welded that on. There. How did that? What is it? The corner of the block. No. Oh. How did that come off in the first place? People being dumb. Uh, you know what happened? They pulled a pair and flipped it. <laughs> yeah. gonna come off. I'm glad you found out. Right before it was bearing the weight. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I'm like not upset because I came, I came into this car expecting to buy a new block. Oh. Okay. So if I don't need to, it's a surprise. Well, it's good that we found this. Yeah. Dude, you know, you ready? You're gonna wanna watch your Yeah. The engine's on the stand. It's three wheeling because someone decided to uh, break the block and then glue it back on. So this is that piece. So I don't know if we're gonna use this block. Um, GB weld block repair? Yeah, if we're gonna use it and gonna get it weld, weld repaired, like with actual real- With the real weld. With metal. Real world weld. Real world weld. Dot com. This balance shaft delete. Yeah, the balance shaft delete with epoxy. 
I saw that. Ooh, that's that's like they must have been a potter or something. Yeah. The other thing I found that was interesting was Sculpting. this front main seal was like almost all the way out. It was like right on the front edge of this. It was on the cusp of exiting. Yeah. These are all OEM timing components, and they feel new. Hmm. Feels good. Yeah. So, all right. More to come. We figured at this point there's no way the crank journals were round, but we still got to see. Oh, what's all that? Oh. That's a bunch of metal. Yeah. Look at this. Look at the pickup tube. That's the deadly oatmeal. That is not the kind you want to eat. No. It like does make copper. me quake. Nurse, though. That's an unbalanced breakfast. It looks coppery. Too, yeah. too much fiber. Can't even spin it. So it's either a main bearing or a rod bearing. That is just... It's not crank walk. So I think that's a rod bearing. I Sometimes guess. rod bearings are made out of multiple metals. Oh. You want the pry bar or the ratcheting breaker bar? Is that the one you think it is? Um, I don't know which one it is. It's the one that's keeping the engine from spinning. Well, that one moved. Oh. Is it? Yeah. Oh. That looks like some of that. Yeah. This is not oh, supposed to yeah. look like that. Oh, you. It, um, there's chunks missing out of that. Like, Chunks. Big big chunks. Same mm -hmm. with that one? Oh, yeah. Was this one supposed to be in two? No, that means it spun. Cool. See how this broke yeah. in half? Yeah. That's, uh, so it's seized and spun? Seized and spun. Seized and spun. Yeah, here's... What is that, number it's three? Kind of like That's number three. That's special. That one's way, way worse. Way worse, sir. It's worse. When it's pushing down? Yeah. yeah. Yep, got it. got it. It's a boy! Wow. <laughs> After you guys said that, oh I got my see goodness. Be proud. Here, can you hold this? Yeah. Look at this. I've never seen a bearing this toast. Oh man. Four I, pieces. Like, I've never seen anything like that. Oatmeal toast. I haven't seen a lot. But not, I've seen this either. Yeah. Did you get the cap for it? This is the cap. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. There it is. Still can't spin it. Still can't? No. So it trashed all four of them. Well, it's toast. Probably oil pump failure or starvation. We're not sure. Leave your opinions in the comments. Either way, we're not using this block. So a quick search on Marketplace and I found this. A 6-bolt 4G63 engine from a Hyundai. It's also my best attempt at becoming Jaffro. This is the same engine you'll find in first-gen, non-turbo DSMs. Low miles and no boost make it a perfect candidate for a build. All right, so we got it. We got it strapped in and locked down, getting some gas. And it, it didn't go anywhere, but... Yep. Let's head back and... Get it in the shop and we'll be good to go. We have an engine, or a block. Had an engine, we have two engines. All right, we've got it back in the shop. And so we're gonna measure everything and figure out what we're gonna do with putting an engine together. But in the meantime, we're gonna keep working on the chassis um, and we'll, we'll keep you updated on the engine. Now I'm just gonna get all this stuff out of here because we need it all out of here. And it's not going to do it by itself, so I got to do it. Let's get to work. All right, so the chassis is not perfect. We've got a couple rust spots here to deal with. That's more of a surface rust here. This is the big, the flaky one. 
I looked underneath and it's not all the way through under underneath in the wheel well it looks fine so I'm gonna just kind of pick it pick at this pick it back and see how deep it is and then we'll take care of it but yeah we'll pick this back so I knocked the majority of the loose stuff off and the good news is it's not soft at all so we could probably fix this but more to come on that I am going to keep taking stuff out of the engine bay so let's continue with that So I got a lot of it, but next things I've got to do are, I'm gonna get the bumper off and the headlights out to get this whole front radiator support area opened up. And then, so I can get this uh, ABS module out of here, because we are not gonna have ABS in this thing. That'll clean up all these brake lines. I can take off the proportioning valve and, yeah, that'll be, Close to everything. Got the clutch master cylinder and the brake booster. But yeah, just about emptied. Now the brakes are all out, or all the brake stuff. Really all that's left is the clutch master, the brake booster, and then that, that firewall insulator. I'm gonna try and take it off in one piece so it um, is one piece and is not ruined. Um, I'm not gonna use it because I think I like the look of the firewall all cleaned up and the black metal better than the whatever that fiberglass material is. All right, the engine bay is empty. Now it needs a serious clean and any of the rust spots, surface rust, it looks like there was some brake fluid leaking over there, kind of ate away at that. We'll get that all cleaned up and then we can repaint all this and make it look good as new. So, yep, and get this all cleaned up too. It's not bad, but it could be better, and it will be better. Okay, so now that everything's out of the engine bay, I am gonna start cleaning this thing. Get it all clean. That's what cleaning is. Let's do it. All right, Alex is here, and now we're gonna we're gonna try and get this chassis cleaned up. We're gonna sand some things and buff some things. We're not buffing. We're just trying to get all the surface rust off. All these, there's a bunch of little spots. I'm gonna start with some You know, them. just like this. And we're gonna get this ready for uh, the guy to take it to the guy. The guy. The guy. The guy, so. The guy for the genie. I like the guy but the Do you wanna cover your fenders at all? Yeah, I do. Yeah, because this is gonna like. Yeah, so I'm gonna get some stuff. Yeah. We're really focusing on this rust spot to get it nice and exposed for repairing. We've got A lot of this all cleaned up. Pretty good. I'm gonna hit it with a rust converter just to kind of get the rest of the stuff. Like there's like little bits and seams there I can't really get to. Just to, you know, really get on top of all of it. Next, what I'm gonna do is take the fenders off and get those out of the way for the, um, the repair that's gonna happen here. Just so 
there's less stuff and then once that's repaired they'll still be off for the paint so then I'm gonna take it somewhere and have them paint yes we painted you okay yeah. yes we painted the engine bay of the Gallant and it turned out great that was perfect conditions so it's it's February and it's it's not gonna be perfect conditions in here to paint and have it turn out as good so I will be taking it somewhere which is okay because while that's going on I can work on getting the engine built so that's where we're at we get the fenders off and get the wiring harness up and out of the way tied up for the um, for the welder to be able to work on that so we can move the shell around without Bilbo dragons all that stuff around down here so yep I'm gonna do that so under the passenger side carpet wheel well or foot well there's this cover here if you take it off You'll find the um, ABS computer and relays, and this is a ground. Um, since we pulled the ABS pump and we're not having any lock brakes, I don't need any of this. So I'm going to remove all that, and that's actually going to give me some space to pull the harness, the main engine harness, which is right there, back in and kind of maybe coil it up in here to pull back um, and hide it better. So yeah, I'm going to take this stuff all out and with that out of the way now I've got all kinds of room for activities so um, I might have to cut a piece of that um, the base plate that the pump computer was sitting on just so I can have something to mount that the kick panel to so there's that hard cover for your feet but yeah we'll get to that okay I've got the harness pulled back through so now there's all kinds of room to work. Um, I'm just gonna strap this one up kind of up in this front corner I think up in here just to get it out of the way and yeah that should that should work. All right we're here with my buddy Clay and we're gonna try and fix this. Actually, multi-layered. Multi yeah, I think so. Well, you can see where it's yeah, it's delaminated and yeah. all from the rust. Uh huh. It's kind of like form, formed into one layer, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll get back. I'm just gonna go probably another maybe quarter inch past the line that you already started with. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You just like keep grinding till the dust isn't orange anymore. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the hole we're gonna to try to work with. I like it. That's not as big as I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, that should go. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work, because I can come right, that'll be like my outside edge. Nice. Goofy shape. That is a goofy <laughs> shape. What does it look like? Uh, you tell me. I got nothing. Yeah. Yeah, looks like that hole. Couple degrees. Yeah. Okay, so actually, that's gonna be quite a bit extra long. Yeah. We got a good starting point though.
Nice. Nice. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that looks awesome. This is super efficient, you know, super professional. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Nice. It's not perfect on this. I'm not real, I'm not super stoked about that and over here. Yeah. Here you go. Okay. It's a little dull, but. So here's the piece we're gonna start with. We're gonna put this, we're gonna weld this in. We'll clean up the paint and the edge and stuff, get ready to weld. And then um, we'll cut a second piece in for that because of the, the complex shape. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Okay, here's where we're at so far. It's smoking because it's hot. That's the <laughs> only reason. Yeah. I can I can do a little more to smooth it out before we flap this get. Yeah. But I'm thinking we're at the point of fitting up another fitting piece. Fitting that piece in. Okay, cool. Okay, so those other two little cracks, this is this is about what they turned into. Um Yeah, it's it's not very deep. So we're just gonna fill that. And then we'll flap this that back and keep finishing it up. fixed okay so we are back from the welder and now before I take it to have the body work done and the engine bay painted I want to mask off some of the interior holes and I'm gonna do some rust conversion on just like the surface rust and a lot of the bolt holes just have some surface rust in them and I'm just gonna um, convert them so everything everything stays nice and starts out nice and um, I've done a couple test areas and it turned out really good. Um, I'll show you what I'm using. It's this stuff. It's a, it's a gel. It's made by Rust-Oleum. You're supposed to wet it down, spray this, let it sit for up to 30 minutes, and then wipe it off, rinse it off, get it off. You can't let it dry. Um, but it does a really good job. The gel kind of like slowly spreads and fills in everywhere over time. And then uh, it also kind of converts areas like that it's not even touching. It's kind of weird. It's just like it kind of converts the, the metal and spreads. It's, it's hard to explain, but it's basically phosphoric acid is what this says. So, um, yeah. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to start by masking stuff off the, uh, the holes to the cabin that I made by pulling stuff out. So I'll do that. I'm not masking off for paint. I'm just trying to stop spray from getting in the engine bay or in the cabin from the engine bay. I've got one little hole there for the throttle cable. Next, I'm gonna hose the thing down with mineral spirits to get all the dust and stuff off from, from welding. Um, why don't you watch? I'm, about to, I'm gonna do it. In there. You watching? Just watch. 
All right, so I'm gonna take this hood latch off because I wanna get that painted too. And I kinda wanna clean this thing up and make it look real nice. So you start by taking it off. Hood latch off. Oh, that's gross. So I'm gonna take this lower bolt off. Um, I've gotta be careful because, I don't know if it was the previous owner, but whoever did the front mount cut this whole corner of the support out. So this whole part doesn't have any support. And if I take this off, this gets really loose, but I'm, I need to be able to get behind it. So there you can see how floppy dangle this is. I know I may make a bracket for this once I have the front mount where I'm gonna put it um, because I do wanna lower the front mount from where they had it, but the farther down I go, it creates issues. So we'll see, we'll get back to that. But all right, I'm gonna clean this, this thing up and then we'll wet it and rust convert. All right, so we're gonna start with one area at a time. The first area I'm gonna focus on is this corner. Um, there's just a lot of little like surface rust in the cracks between the seams where there was no seam sealer. And um, yeah, I just wanna put a, put a stop to that. So we'll start here. You gotta wet it first and then apply the gel. So we'll do that. Okay, we'll go with that. We'll let that sit and uh, convert. Oh, I can already see it's doing stuff right there. Okay, we'll let that go. All right, now I'm gonna spray it off. It's been a half hour and wipe off the rest and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, well that did a lot. That looks a lot better. Um, there's still a couple deep spots in those cracks, so I'll probably hit it again. It says you might need to do a couple, a couple treatments, but for the most part, that did that did a lot. That got about 90% of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet and spray a, 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 the rest of the car pretty much. So we'll do that. So Brandon's here and um, we just finished rust converting and now we are going in and we are plugging all of the bolt holes with these little um, Allen set screws. They're black oxide. Um, and I'm thinking I'll plug all the holes, then it'll get painted, and any of them that I don't use, I'll leave them and it'll look nice with paint over the, over the set screw. And then if I need to use the hole, I can just unthread this and the threads didn't get all painted. So, um, I don't know. I've never heard of anyone doing this, but it kind of makes sense and I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. So I just got this pack of set screws from Amazon and now we're going through and filling these. So that's what we're doing. Okay, so kind of the last couple things before I get this thing painted. Um, I'm gonna convert this fuel return to an AN uh, fitting. I'm gonna do like a compression fitting. But I'm gonna do it back here. Cause I don't want all this up here when I can run a nice clean AM line. So I'm gonna cut this back here. I'm also gonna relocate my brake proportioning valve so it's not like front and center on the firewall since there's not gonna be anything up in here. I don't wanna be like, oh look, there's the brake proportioning valve. So I might move it back over here, maybe, maybe here. Um, which means I'm gonna do need to change these lines. So what I'm thinking I'll do is I'll cut these back here, put a coupler on it, and then run new lines over to where the new one is, wherever that may be. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna cut cut these back, cut this back, and uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. All right, so there's the firewall cleaned up of the lines. You can see that one, the fuel returns cut right there, and the uh, brake lines are gone. All right, so I'm gonna give this thing one last power wash and degrease before we take it down to the painter, just cause 
you know, you keep finding spots and you sand it and you make more mess and then you think you're done and then you're like, oh, there's another spot. So um, I'm done. I'm going to wash it, degrease it, and then we're going to put it on the trailer. With that, the car is loaded on the trailer and dropped off at the painter. It was a lot of work to get it to this point, but I'm going to be really happy that I went this far when the car is all said and done. In the next episode, we'll tear into the new engine, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it.